Hello everyone, in this tutorial I am going to be covering adding a menu to the Tetris game which can be used to exit it and restart the game and view the high score and everything like that. So the menu is going to be one of those drop down menus up at the top of the screen and I am going to show you how to do that. Now unfortunately to do this I am going to have to use a whole bunch of um, things I have not previously covered, but I'll explain them as I go along. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually add 25 to our height. So make that 565, because our menu is going to be 25. And then in here, we want to set the bounds of the Tetris main. So tm.set bounds zero twenty five width height minus twenty five and we are also going to want to set frame the frames layout to null so it's kind of hard to explain what this does basically there's different layouts that a frame or any other component can use and if you set it to null then it leaves all of the positioning up to you and then when you set the bounds it that's what position it's going to be in so if you run this now you can see we have a white bar at the top of the screen and that is where our menu is going to go And now, to actually create the menu. The first thing we need is called J menu. And that's going to be the whole bar. Equals new J menu. And then we're going to want to set the bounds of that. Set bounds. zero zero width and 25 and then we're going to want to add that to our frame as well frame dot add bar and then if we run this you see we have a bar up here which apparently thinks the screen is too big and get rid of that Okay, so I'm not quite sure why that is, but maybe if we just subtract one from the width or something, it'll get rid of that weird arrow. No, let's try 10. Okay, I have no clue what that arrow is for, but hopefully it'll go away later. The next thing we need to do is create a J menu bar and that's going to be file equals new J menu bar and file. So mm, I may have done this wrong. Oh, I guess I did. Okay, so actually this is the bar, sorry about that, J menu bar is actually the bar. And then J menu is going to be the actual thing we click on. So now if we run this, you can see we have a bar up here, there's no weird arrow on it anymore. And if we give file some bounds, set bounds, 0, 0, 20, for the height, 24, 45 is a good width. And we add that to our bar. 
bar dot add file. Then you can see we have a little file button right here. And now we need to actually make it display stuff. And the way you do that is with J menu items. So I'm just going to put some spaces in here to separate everything out. And in here we'll create the first three items we're going to have, which is going to be um, new game, um, see high scores, which we will get into saving later, and exit. So J menu item new game equals new J menu item and we'll call it new game and control shift O to import that new game dot set action new wait no that's the wrong thing sorry instead we want to do add action listener new action listener action event e And what did I mess up? Oh, okay. That is wrong. Instead, inside of here, we're going to have public void action performed action event E. and import that. Okay, so what this is doing is it's adding an action listener to this J menu item and we're creating a new action listener inside of it and that action listener whenever this option is clicked this action performed method is called so whatever we put in here is going to be called and eventually we're going to have code for new game but for now we're just going to print out new game print line starting new game and then all we have to do is copy and paste this three times rename them to high score and high score and exit and exit high score exit and then in here, we're going to put dot s y s o u t control space closing system dot exit zero. What this does is it just tells the program to end without doing any other actions. And then in here, um. I'll get to this code next. First I want to show that all this in concept works. So to get all these to actually show up all we have to do is file.add and then all of them. So the first one is new game file.add high score and file.add exit. So now if you run this and we click on file, we have new game. If we click it, it says starting new game. 
we have high score which does nothing so far and we have exit which closes it now we're almost done the only thing we have left to do is to make a menu pop up with the high score on it and the way we're going to do this is we're just going to create an extra J frame for it. So um, int high score equals zero. Place this with get high score code later. I haven't programmed that yet because we haven't actually set up the actual game yet, but we'll have that later. And then we'll have JFrame alert equals new JFrame. And let's make it high score alert dot set size. Let's only make it 200 by 100. Alert dot set layout null and alert dot set location relative to null and then alert dot set resizable false alert dot set visible true And now we need to add the high score thing onto there and an OK button. Because now if we do this, file, high score, all we get is this menu that pops up. Then we can close it and go back to here. And it repeatedly works. But we want to have a, we wanted to actually say something. So I think it might actually need to be, hold on a second. Mm, yeah, it could be bigger than that. Let's make it 200 by 200. And then let's make a button. So J buttons are similar to the J menu items except that they do not need to be in a menu, they can just be on any um, J-frame or any other component. So, OK button equals new J button. And then what you want it to be called. Control shift O to import J button. And all of these J things, they're all coming from the same place as J frame, which is this Java X dot swing. And that has a whole bunch of useful stuff for GUIs. OK dot OK button dot set bounds. Um, 50. 120, 100, and 30. And alert dot add OK button to actually add it to the screen. Let's run this. See where it ends up. That's a good spot for it. Close this. And now we'll make it close that window. OK button dot add action listener. It's the same thing as before. New action listener. Public void action performed action event E. And then how we can make it close the window is just call alert 
dot dispose. Why won't it let me call this? Fine. We can make alert final. What final means, uh, I've gone over it before, it cannot be set to something else later, but that's not a problem for us. So now if we run this, file, high score, OK, the window closes, and then we can do it repeatedly. Now we just need to say what the actual high score is. And to do that, we are going to create a J text pane. J text. Actually, we can just do a J label. Score equals new J label. The high score is plus high score and then score dot set bounds zero zero two hundred fifty and alert dot add score file high score the high score is zero and actually we could shrink this window a little bit so I'm going to do that let's just make it 150 and move this up to 100 and let's see how that looks mm, no the button still needs to move up um, how about 80? There we go. So that's our little high score window. We click OK and it goes away. And then here's our options. That'll eventually start a new game. And that closes the program. That is going to be the end of this tutorial. If you have any questions about anything I covered in it, please leave a comment and I'll get back to you on that as soon as I can either in a video or in a, another comment. And thanks for watching. If you like the video, like it, even a favorite. And if you want to see more of this, subscribe to my channel, leave me a positive comment. Goodbye.